Hello students, how are you today? Today we're going to review lessons 10 through 18. Now, first we're going to talk about time. And remember that we can say time two ways. For example, it is 2.30, it is 2.30, or we can say it is half past two. It is 2.30, it is half past two. This one is easy, okay? Now, uh, we can also say uh, 2 a.m., this means in the morning, in the morning, or we can say 2 p.m., this means in the afternoon. Okay, so 2 a.m. is in the morning, usually we're sleeping, and 2 p.m. is in the afternoon. Okay, now look at the pictures on the monitor, and we, I'm going to ask the assistants, but first you guess, and then the assistants will tell us the answers. So, Ali, what time is it? It's one o'clock. It's one o'clock, good. Okay, now the next one is for Susan. Susan, what time is it? It is 2.30 or it is half past two. Yes, it's 2.30 or it's half past two. Okay, Isabel, the next one is for you. What time is it? It's seven o'clock. Yes, it's seven o'clock. Okay, now let's look at some digital clocks. Uh, now, Ali, what is the time on this clock? It is 10.50 or 10 to 11. Yes, it's 10.50, it's 10 to 11. All right, Isabel, for you, what time is it now? It's a quarter past two or it's 2.15. Yes, it's a quarter past two or it's 2.15. Okay, Susan, one for you. It is 25 past 5, or it is 5.25. Yes, it's 25 past 5, or it's 5.25. Good. All right. Now it's time for you to look and listen. Look and listen. It's 11 o'clock. It's 6.15. It's a quarter past three. It's half past eight. It's 10 to four. It's 3.50. Read and repeat. Now, let's talk about more information about time, and uh, I'll let me write one sentence on the board. I go to work at 9 a.m. Now, we are going to talk about prepositions, little words like this. Now, we use at for times groups of special days, like at Christmas, so we could say at Christmas. In British English, they say at the weekend, but remember in American English, it's on the weekend, um, and we can say at night. Now, we use on, on, to talk about days and weekends on the weekend. So let's uh, say at the weekend UK, on the weekend US, and Canada, of course. All right. We use in the, in. So in the morning, 
for example. So this is parts of the day. Uh, in the summer, in the summer, and in for months, for example, June, and in the years, 2004. Okay, so in the parts of the day, seasons, months, and years. Okay, so at, on, and in. You have to think about which ones to use. Now, let's practice. Ali, what time did you get up this morning? I got up at half past seven this morning. Okay, good. Susan, what are you doing on the weekend? I am going to visit my friend on the weekend. Good. And Isabel, when are you going on holiday? I'm going on holiday in August. In August. Good idea. Okay. Now, we're going to look at some sentences. The prepositions are not there, so our assistants will put in the prepositions. But you look, and you think, and you guess. So, here we go. The first sentence, I'm going to see a film mm -mm, Friday night. Okay, this one is for Susan. I am going to see a film on Friday night. Yes, I'm going to see a film on Friday night. Okay, here's another one. We are having a picnic mm -mm, the weekend. Okay, Isabel, this one is for you. We are having a picnic on the weekend. On the weekend, yes, okay. Now, can you say at the weekend? Yes, we can. It's British English. Yes, okay, so I'll put it like that. Okay, now here's another one. My sister was born in mm -mm, February. Okay, my sister was born. This is her birthday. Okay, uh, this one is for Ali. My sister was born in February. In February, yes, in February. Okay, here's another one. I will meet you mm -mm, two o'clock. This one is also for you, Ali. I'll meet you at two o'clock. Yes, I will meet you at two o'clock. Okay, she moved to Istanbul, mm -mm, 1998. Okay, Isabel. She moved to Istanbul in 1998. Yes, good. She moved to Istanbul in 1998. He goes to bed, mm -mm, 11 o'clock, see, mm -mm, night. Okay, Susan, you get to do two. He goes to bed at 11 o'clock at night. Yes, good. He goes to bed at 11 o'clock at night. Okay, very good. Now, do you remember the parts of the day? Let's look at them. I'll make some room here. Now, of course, we'll start with morning. And we say in the morning. Afternoon. In the after noon. Evening in the evening. And we have night. And remember, night is special. At night. Okay? So, morning in the morning. Afternoon in the afternoon. Evening in the evening. Night at night. Now, we also have names for when we eat. So let me show you those, and they're a little bit different. Okay, breakfast, and we say at breakfast, lunch, at lunch. Where is she? She's at lunch. Dinner, at dinner, and some people say supper, at supper. So breakfast, at breakfast, lunch, at lunch. Dinner at dinner, supper at supper. Okay, now, also, when we talk about dates, we use ordinal numbers. Now, we saw these before. And remember that ordinal numbers are the ones 
that show the order. Okay, so we have, for example, the first, the second, the third, the fourth. Okay, so because we're talking about the order of days in a month here. Now, we usually use the, so the first. So if I say, my birthday is on the 8th of April, you can see that it's the 8th day of April. And we can also say, my birthday is on April the 8th, okay? So these are the same information. It's just two ways of saying it. My birthday is on the 8th of April. My birthday is on April the 8th. They're the same. Okay, now I'm going to show you a long way to tell you about my birthday. Now, here we go. I'm going to use my red pen so that you can see all the prepositions as we go. Okay, so I was born at 8.15 in the morning on Tuesday on the 3rd of October in the fall in 1970. So, time, part of the day, day, day of the month, season, and year. This is not true. I was really born in 1971. <laughs> uh, no. Okay, now we're going to ask our assistants to do the same thing with their answers, and maybe they're telling the truth and maybe they're not. Okay, so Ali, you go first. I was born at 11 p.m. in the evening on Saturday, on the 1st of April, in the spring in 1978. Okay, all right, good. Isabel. I was born at 3 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday on the 3rd of January in the winter in 1980. Okay. I was born at half past nine in the, after, in the evening on Tuesday uh, on the 8th, 18th of March in the spring uh, in 1977. Okay, in the spring. All right, now you can do this for your birthday. But now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. I was born on Monday, the 10th of December in 1980. Her birthday is on the 15th of August. He was born on the 27th of October, 1975. We are going to France on the 1st of May. My sister's birthday is on the 22nd of January. Read and repeat. Right now, let's talk about the weather and the seasons. Our assistants will help us so you can remember. Now, first, we're going to talk about the months in the spring. So, Ali, what are the spring months? March, April, and May are in the spring. March, April, and May. Yes, good. Okay, of course, then we have summer and... Susan is going to tell us the summer months. June, 
July and August are in the summer. Yes, June, July, and August are in the summer. Now we have the fall. Isabel, which months are in the fall? September, October, and November are in the fall. Okay, September, October, and November are in the fall. And what's another name for the fall? The autumn. Yes, autumn. Okay, and finally we have winter, and I can do this one. I know the winter months. December, January, and February. Okay, so these are the seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter, and these are the months in those seasons. Okay, now Isabel, what is the weather usually like in the summer? It's usually hot and sunny in the summer. Yes, that's right. And we use uh, adjectives like hot and sunny. These are adjectives to talk about the weather. Now, Susan, what is the weather usually like in the winter? In the winter, the weather is usually cold and rainy. It is sometimes, sometimes it is snowy. Yes, uh-huh. Okay. And Ali, what is the weather like in the spring? It is sometimes warm and rainy in the spring. Okay, it could be warm and it could be rainy in most places. And how about the fall, Isabel? In the fall, the weather is cool and rainy. Cool and rainy, yes, okay. So here are some adjectives to talk about the seasons. And now you can look and listen. Look and listen. I was born in July. July is in the summer. It is usually hot and sunny in the summer. December is in the winter. It is usually very cold and rainy or snowy in the winter. Flowers grow in the spring. It is usually warm and rainy in the spring. September is in the fall. The weather is usually cool and rainy in the fall. Read and repeat. Okay, now, when we talk about what the weather is doing now, we can use present continuous. So, we can use adjectives, or we can use the present continuous. So, we'll look at these two ways to talk about the weather. First, we'll talk about adjectives. Now, here are some things we can say. It's sunny. It's hot. It's rainy, it's wet, it's cold, and it's windy. Okay, so these are some adjectives for talking about the weather. We can also say something like this. Today is a nice day. The sun is shining. So here we have the present continuous. We could say, today is a wet day. It's raining. Today is a wet day. It's raining. Today is a cold 
day, it's snowing. Today is a cold day, it's snowing. The wind is blowing, it's windy. So these are ways to use the present continuous to talk about the weather, and then these are some adjectives that we can use to talk about the weather. Now, let's practice, and let me make some room on the board, and we're going to do some sentences with the help of our assistants. Now, you look and you think also. Okay, here we go. It is sunny. The sun... Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get my red pen here for the answer. And Isabel, you do the first one. Okay. It's sunny. The sun is shining. Yes, good. The sun is shining. It's sunny. Adjective. Present continuous. The sun is shining. Okay, here's another one. It is cloudy and wet. It... Mm -hmm. Okay, Susan, what's the hmm hmm? It is raining. Okay, it is raining. All right, it's cloudy and wet. It's raining. Now, here comes another one. Let's go out and play in the snow. It, hmm hmm. Ollie? It is snowing. Yes, it's, I'll say, it's snowing. All right. Okay. Do you like snow, Ollie? Yes, I do. Great. Okay. Now, we used present continuous to talk about the weather. We can also use present continuous to talk about what we're wearing now, like clothes and makeup. Now, let's do a little bit of review with the help of our assistants. And we're going to look at some of these pictures, and they will tell us something about it. So, with this picture, Isabel, tell us something about the picture. Okay. She is wearing a blue dress. Okay. Ali? She is wearing earrings. Yes. And Susan? She is wearing le red lipstick. Yes. She is wearing red lipstick. Now, here's another picture. And uh, you're going to tell us something about this interesting person. So let's start with Susan. He is wearing a green hat. Okay, Isabel. He has a red nose. He has a big red nose, yes? He has yellow hair. Yes, he has beautiful yellow hair. Okay, now the next picture is a beautiful rainbow, and we're going to talk about the colors in the rainbow. Now, some people use letters to remember the names of the colors in the rainbow. Now, these letters are R-O-Y-B-G-I-V. If you say, it's not a word, but you can say roy <laughs> which is not a word. However, each letter is the name of a color. So, we'll see if the assistants know the names of the colors. So, let's start with Susan. What's the first one? Red. Yes, red. Okay. Ali? Orange. Orange, yes. Isabel? Yellow. Yes, yellow. Okay, Susan? Blue. Ali? Green. Isabel? I don't know this one. Okay, I thought maybe you wouldn't. I is for indigo. It's a kind of dark blue. Okay, okay. indigo. Indigo, good girl. Okay, Susan, the last one. I don't know it. Okay. V is for violet. It's a kind of flower, this color. Okay? So now you know another way to remember the colors in the rainbow and the colors in English also. Now, let's look at our clothing and we'll talk about what we're wearing today and the colors. So let's start with Isabel. What are you wearing today? I'm wearing a dark blue sweater and blue jeans. I'm wearing a ring and earrings. Yes, good. All right. Susan, what are you wearing? I'm wearing a gray shirt and black pants and ring. Okay, good. And Ali, what are you wearing? 
Oh, what am I wearing? You tell me what I'm wearing. Okay, you are wearing a blouse. It is beige, brown, and blue. And you are wearing brown pants. Brown. Actually, they're black, Ali. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's time for you to look and listen. Look and listen. In the summer, we wear shorts and sandals. In the winter, he wears blue jeans, a sweater, and boots. In the spring, she wears pants, a sweater, and a jacket. She usually wears a skirt. He often wears a suit and tie. Read and repeat. Now, let's look a little bit more at the present continuous. Now, remember, the present continuous is used for the present time, but action now. Okay, so something is happening now. Now, the simple present, simple present is for facts habits, and routines. Now, let's look at a combination of these. Now, here's an example. I smoke cigarettes. I smoke cigarettes. This is a fact. It's my habit, and it's my routine, unfortunately. Okay? That is my habit. Now, I smoke cigarettes but I am not smoking a cigarette now. This is my habit. I smoke cigarettes, but I'm not smoking a cigarette now. Okay, so this is present continuous action now, or action, not action now. Uh, so this is the simple present. This is the present continuous. Okay? And remember, the formula is B -m -m ing. So am is R, and the verb with ing on the end. Okay, now this one changes, this one doesn't change. So this is the one that does the work. And so, for example, I am wearing jeans. She is not wearing a jacket now. So I am wearing jeans. She is not wearing a jacket. Here's the question. Is he wearing jeans? Yes, he is. Or no, he isn't. Now remember, if the question begins with a be verb, it's a yes, no question, and you answer with the right be verb. Okay? Now, we can also ask information questions. So let me make some room here. Here's some information questions. What are you wearing? I am wearing jeans. What are you wearing? I am wearing jeans. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask some questions. Our assistants will answer them. We are going to look at some pictures on the screen. Now you think about the answers, and our assistants will think too. So first, we have a picture that Ali is going to tell us a little bit about this picture. They are playing basketball. OK. Are they doing anything else? They what are jumping. They? Good. OK. Right. What is the girl wearing? The 
The girl is wearing green blouse. The boy has a brown hair. The boy has red shirts. And the girl has yellow hair. The okay. ball is orange. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. All right, so jumping is good. That's not a verb that we've seen very much. So they're jumping. Okay, now here's one for Susan. Tell us about the photo. I think they are a couple. They are cooking spaghetti. Uh, the kettle is boiling. Good. A man is holding bread and the woman is mixing the sauce. Okay, the woman is mixing the sauce. Good. Is the woman smiling? Yes, she does. Yes, she is. Uh, she yes, is. she is. Good. Okay. Now, here's another photo. Isabel, tell us something about the next picture. He is working at the computer. He is touching the keyboard. Um, he is wearing a white shirt and a tie. Yes, good. All right. Now, let's change a little bit and we're going to talk about the body. Now, let's look at the parts of the body quickly. You look on your screen and listen as I tell you what these things are. So this is the body first, the face, the mouth, the lips, one lip, two lips, one tooth, many teeth, the tongue, here's the face again, hair, the hair, the ear, the eyebrow, cheek, chin. Okay, so there's the face and nose. We can't forget the nose and the eye. She has brown eyes. Forehead. And now here's somebody else's body. Okay, let's look at his body. The neck, shoulder, back, arm, chest. Here's her body. And inside you can see the stomach. Here's part of the body, the elbow. Another part is the wrist. And here's the hand, the thumb, and a finger. More body. This is the leg, the thigh, the knee. Here's the foot, the ankle, and the toe. Here's the right hand and the left hand. Let's practice. I'm going to ask you some questions. Now, Ali, where does a person have a headache? It's in his head. <laughs> yes, it's all in our heads. Okay. Isabel, what other aches are there? Stomach ache, toothache, earache, and backache. Yes, good. Okay. Now, spell stomach ache. S-T-O-M-A-C-H-A-C-H-E. Yeah, very good. Okay, now, Susan, what parts of our body can be sore? Hmm. Let's see, a sore throat, sore hand, sore foot, and a sore toe, I think like that. Yes, good, okay. A lot of things can be sore, but I hope not all at the same time. Okay, Ali, what parts of the body can we break? <clears throat> we can break a leg, a hand, a back, a wrist, a finger, a neck and okay all right there's a lot that we can break now I hope that you are all very careful <laughs> don't break anything okay now let's make some room here and we're going to talk about prepositions 
Again, prepositions in English are very small, but very important. And so we're going to practice a little bit more. Now, again, we're going to talk about at, in, and on. At, in, on. Now, remember that we use these prepositions to talk about places, where things are. Now, we use in, let's do in first, for towns, cities, and countries. Towns, cities, and countries. We use on for streets. Okay? And we use at for a special place where uh, maybe two streets meet. Okay? Like a corner. Okay? So, in, on, and at. Now, let's look at some examples of sentences with these prepositions. Now, we're going to do in. Now remember, let's see, in is for general or large spaces. And here are some examples. He lives in Paris. He lives in Paris. The children are in school. The children are in school. This is a place. The pen is in the bag. Okay? Now, the pen is small and the bag is big. Okay? In the bag. Now, with on, remember, on is for flat surfaces or lines, like a street or a road. Okay? This is a flat surface. So, I live on this street. I live on this street. The book is on the table. The book is on the table. And there is a picture on the wall. There is a picture on the wall, okay? So these are flat surfaces or lines. Now let's talk about at. And remember that at is for special places or where two lines meet, okay? So for example, he works at the bank. He works at the bank. This is a special place. We can meet at the corner of the street. Okay? And remember, the corner is where two streets meet. We can meet at the corner of the street. And I see my friends at the cafe. I see my friends at the cafe. This also is a special place. Okay? Now, we can talk about these prepositions when we talk about where objects are. So let me make some room here and we'll do a little bit more with prepositions. Okay? Now, remember that the preposition comes before the place. Before the place. So here's some sentences. There is a mirror on the wall. Is there a TV in the living room? Are there any books on the table. There are some people at the corner of the street. Okay, so here we have a corner, at the corner of the street. Okay, now 
With there, remember that the real subject comes after the verb. So you have to look here and then look back to get the right verb. So here are some examples. There is a stove in the kitchen. There is one, only one. So we look back to make it is. There is a stove. There are four chairs around the table. There are four chairs around the table. So this is plural because you have four chairs. So we look back to have R. So chairs are. Okay? So remember this about there is and there are. Now, let's practice by asking some questions. Now, I also want you to remember any and some. So let's look at my picture and answer my questions about it. And let's start with Ali. Are there any books on the table, Ali? Yes, there are three books on the table. Okay. Now, you ask Susan. Susan, is there a sofa in the living room? Yes, there is a sofa in the living room. Okay. Susan, ask Isabel. Isabel, is there any f furniture in the garden? No, there isn't any furniture in the garden. Yes, okay. Now you ask Ali. Ali, are there any people in the kitchen? No, there aren't any people in the kitchen. Okay, great. Now, let's do a little bit of last review. And we're going to talk about articles first. So, now, we need to use the articles a, an, the, and nothing when we use, use nouns. Ali, when do we use a? We use a when the word begins with a consonant. Good. Can you give me an example? Yes. For example, we say a table. The word table begins with the sound T. T is a consonant. Good. Okay. Do we say a university or an university? We say a university because the word university begins with a sound Y. Y is not a vowel. Okay. It starts with a Y sound. So university. So we don't use an. We use a because of the Y sound. University. Okay. Isabel? We use an when the word has a vowel sound. Can you give me an example? Yes, we say an Italian sofa. Italian begins with a I sound. It's a consonant. It's not a consonant. It's a vowel. It's a vowel. Yes, good. Okay. Do we say a hour or an hour? We say an hour. A sound is not a consonant. It's a vowel. Okay, so it starts with an O oh sound. Okay, and Susan, do we use a or an with non-countable nouns? No, we don't. We only use a or an with countable nouns or adjectives with uh, countable nouns. Yes, good. <coughs> can you give me an example, please? Yes. For example, we can say a table or an American television, but we can't say a furniture, because furniture is non-countable now. Yes, good. Isabel, how do we usually use the? We use the when we talk about specific person, thing, or place. Okay. Can you give me an example? For example, I go to the bank. This means the bank that I usually go. Yes, that you usually use. Okay. All right. Now, it's time for you to look and listen. Look and listen. There is some furniture in the bedroom. Is there an umbrella in the bedroom? There isn't any water in the bathroom. There are some chairs in the kitchen. Read and repeat.
Listen and write. Listen to these words and write them down. Number one, tables. Tables. Number two, arm. Arm. Number three, furniture. Furniture. Number four, yellow. Yellow. Number five, Stomach ache, stomach ache. Number six, dentist, dentist. Number seven, fridge, fridge. Number eight, sit down, sit down. Number nine, pants. Pants. Number ten, snowing. Snowing. Now check your work. Number one, tables. Number two, arm. Number three, furniture. Number four, yellow. Number five, stomach ache. Number six, Dentist. Number seven, fridge. Number eight, sit down. Number nine, pants. Number ten, snowing. Now listen to these sentences and write them down. Number one, I am going to the dentist because I have. A toothache. I am going to the dentist because I have a toothache. Number two. Is there any milk in the fridge? Is there any milk in the fridge? Number three. There aren't any people wearing blue jeans in class today. There aren't any people wearing blue jeans in class today. Number four. Because it was sunny, she told the children to go and play outside in the garden. Because it was sunny, she told the children to go and play outside in the garden. Number five. She usually gets up at 7.30 in the morning. She usually gets up at 7.30 in the morning. Number six, I am buying some new furniture on the weekend. I am buying some new furniture on the weekend. Number seven, he is going to the supermarket. Do you want anything? He is going to the supermarket. Do you want anything? Number eight, touch your toes. Touch your toes. Number nine, my mother's birthday is on the 28th of October. My mother's birthday is on the 28th of October. Number ten, May is the third month of spring. May is the third month of spring. Now check your work. Number one. I am going to the dentist because I have a toothache. Number two. Is there any milk in the fridge? Number three. 
There aren't any people wearing blue jeans in class today. Number four. Because it was sunny, she told the children to go and play outside in the garden. Number five. She usually gets up at 7.30 in the morning. Number six. I am buying some new furniture on the weekend. Number seven. He is going to the supermarket. Do you want anything? Number eight. Touch your toes. Number nine. My mother's birthday is on the 28th of October. Number 10. May is the third month of spring. Now, read the story and answer the questions about it. Read and answer. It is my friend's birthday on Saturday. She was born on the 17th of April. She will be 21 years old this year. I'm going to buy her a pink sweater for her birthday. Some of her friends are buying her chocolates, but she told me that she doesn't like chocolate because it gives her a toothache and she hates going to the dentist. The party starts at 8.30 on Saturday night. She is having the party in her living room, so she is moving all the furniture out of the living room to make space for people to dance. I don't know what to wear for the party. I usually like wearing blue jeans and a t-shirt, but I want to look smart for the party. On Friday afternoon, I'm going to go shopping for some new clothes for the party. I hope that it's going to be sunny on Friday when I go shopping. I don't like going out if the weather is cold and rainy. Now, listen to the questions and write your answers. Number one. When is my friend's birthday? When is my friend's birthday? Number two. What am I going to buy her for her birthday? What am I going to buy her for her birthday? Number three. Why doesn't she like eating chocolate? Why doesn't she like eating chocolate? Number four. What do I usually like wearing? What do I usually like wearing? Number five. Which room is she having the party in? Which room is she having the party in? Number six. What time is the party going to start on Saturday? What time is the party going to start on Saturday? Number seven. Where am I going on Friday afternoon? Where am I going on Friday afternoon? Number eight. What do I want the weather to be like on Friday? What do I want the weather to be like on Friday? Number nine. Why is my friend going to move the furniture from the living room? Why is my friend going to move the furniture from the living room? Number 10. Which season is my friend's birthday in? Which season is my friend's birthday in? Now, check your answers. Number 1. When is my friend's birthday? Your friend's birthday is on the 17th of April. Number two. What am I going to buy her for her birthday? You are going to buy her a pink sweater. Number three. Why doesn't she like eating chocolate? 
She doesn't like eating chocolate because it gives her a toothache. Number four, what do I usually like wearing? You usually like wearing blue jeans and a t-shirt. Number five, which room is she having the party in? She's having the party in the living room. Number six, what time is the party going to start on Saturday? The party is going to start at 8.30 on Saturday night. Number seven, where am I going on Friday afternoon? You are going shopping on Friday afternoon. Number eight, what do I want the weather to be like on Friday? You want the weather to be sunny on Friday. Number nine, why is my friend going to move the furniture from the living room? She is going to move the furniture to make space for people to dance. Number 10. Which season is my friend's birthday in? Your friend's birthday is in the spring. All right, we'll see you next time.